Yum, yum! All right, welcome to the Doom 2016 Weapons Deep Dive. Uh, this is going to be a deep dive in every single weapon in Doom. We'll go through every single modification on every weapon. And uh, we're going to do this in glorious 3440 times 1440 ultra widescreen, which is the only way to play a first person shooter, in my opinion. I am an unapologetic high end PC gamer, so this is running on dual Titan X's with a 34 inch curved uh, ultra wide screen at 3440 by 1440. Um, a little bit about uh, id tech 6 first. So let's talk a little bit about the engine here because there's a little more mystery around id tech than there is more popular engines like, well, not really popular engines, but just sort of uh, more accessible engines like Unreal Engine 4 or Unity. Um, there's been some big improvements in Intech 6 over Intech 5, which was, I suppose, Rage was their last game with Intech 5. That had a number of issues. Um, the best thing about Intech 6, in my opinion, is the screen space reflections and the dynamic lighting. So if you look at this, this isn't this giant wall here. This isn't just a, uh, is not just a large luminous texture, right? It's, it's actually a light. So they either have an area light or maybe a large spotlight behind here. Again, I'm not super familiar with Intech 6 because even though I'm a, an expert 3D animator, I don't use it uh, in tech, um, but so some of my assumptions may be wrong. But essentially you've got a real light behind this um, casting shadows on the floor. So if I were to knock this stool over, you'll see the light in the, in the shadow. You'll see the shadows moving there. So there's an actual light being thrown and a shadow being cast here. Um, and these are actually lights as well. So there's probably point lights underneath these. Uh, the track lighting here is is probably just a luminous uh, polygon with a glow effect, but that may, I'm not really sure, maybe they have uh, some mesh lights in id Tech uh, 6, I'm not really sure. Um, but it does have screen space reflections, and, and Doom um, with metallic and plastic and glass surfaces and even translucent glass just kills it. It's really the best looking game I've seen with when it comes to metallic glass uh, and uh, plastic surfaces. Some of the environments are just stunning. And it does fine with diffuse surfaces as well. If you look at a carpet here, this is a diffuse surface. So, you know, id Tech uses some sort of PBR or physically based shading. Um, probably similar to Unreal Engine 4 Unity where you have uh, some simple controls for specularity and roughness and uh, metalness. Um, not quite like a ray tracer. With a ray tracer, you use actual refractive index and things like that to determine uh, the reflectivity of a surface or how light bends through a translucent surface or transparent surface. But uh, id Tech does a great job with materials. The skin materials leave a lot to be desired. There's not a lot of human characters in this. Really, <laughs> there's not really any living human characters at all. Um, but the skin does not look great. So they need another shader with some subsurface scattering or something like that. I think. Maybe that's uh, some of the engineers can come up with something, but the environments look fantastic. Uh, screen space reflections. This isn't probably the best um, place to look at reflections, best environment to look at reflections, but it's the only place I'm not being attacked by monsters constantly. Uh, but a screen space reflection is similar. It's not like a ray trace reflection where you've got um, uh, rays being traced uh, through the environment and the camera, but it is using uh, a sort of a shortcut. And it works through the camera view, and it's using some depth buffering and, and different buffer data, as well as some normal mapping or normal data from the geometry to create screen space reflections. And a lot of engines have this now, and it just adds a ton. So the combination of really varying, uh, using maps to determine roughness, uh, screen space reflections, of course there's ambient occlusion as well. Um, you've got some nice lighting effects like glare. You'll get the glare on the gun here on the metal, as well as some... Uh, sort of uh, lens uh, lens effects, lens flares, which always strikes me as kind of funny because you're you're looking. It's supposed to be your eye, not a camera. Although I suppose your eye could have, potentially have some lens flares or lens elements in it because it does have a lens. But um, so you've got all of that, and also one of the best things about uh, the id engine, and this was uh, present way back in Doom Three ten years ago, is they have some sort of equivalent to Flash, where you have um, basically resolution independent text. So all these uh, readouts and screens, no matter how close you get to them, the text is ultra sharp. 
and that adds a ton because if you notice there's actually some readouts in here where they don't have that so if I go over here these shapes aren't using the same technology right that's just a texture map and you can see the pixels and it really just sort of throws you off whereas if you look at this let me even just go to a, a weapon with um, let me switch out here get a scope I mean, it's just super sharp text, and it looks fantastic. You have a glow on there. Um, it can be animated. I really wish other games would use this technology because the readouts and computer screens and other games fall apart when you get up close to them. You should be able to just zoom right in there and read uh, whatever's on a readout in a screen, whether it's on a weapon or on a wall like this. Um, and again, it's got this sort of cool glass, uh, translucent sort of uh, texture here. They just do a really, really good job with it in, in id tech. And I believe they're using Mega Texture still, or something similar to Mega Texture. Now, people play Rage, remember Mega Texture as the thing that ruined the game for them. <laughs> because uh, you would see texture popping. And what it's essentially doing is um, streaming in textures from a disk. So you can have very large textures in the game that don't have to be held in memory. And you could bring them in uh, sort of a level of detail way through off streaming them off the disk. And so if I, if I click, if I switch weapons quickly, you can see some texture popping still. And this is a dual Titan X system. And, you know, each Titan X has 12 gigs of RAM. This really shouldn't be happening. You should really be able to buffer these textures in a system this powerful. Um, but it happens pretty quickly. Rage is pretty bad. The only place you really notice it is on uh, the weapons, and you can see that happening. Maybe I'll slow this down in After Effects. They may actually buffer after the first... Yeah, they may actually buffer after the first uh, time you do it. So maybe that complaint's not that legitimate. Yeah, you don't see them doing it again, so they're it's buffered now. But Mega Texture is a great idea. The idea you could have one gigantic, say, 32,000 uh, by 32,000 pixel texture that you can sort of chop up into little pieces and stream into the game. You know, the, the most amount of pixels I have on screen at any one time now is, is just the resolution of this game here, this monitor, 3440 by 1440. Um, so you can have much larger textures streaming in, and you can get things like uh, you can see all the detailed uh, text on this weapon, and you can read it. And it's really cool when you have these um, high-res displays. So Mega Texture, it's still got some life in it, or if it's actually some other distant, different system in Intex 6, that's something similar at least. So I, I, th I still think that's a path worth um, pursuing. Okay, so that's enough of, of Intex 6 and, and sort of an introduction, but let's get to the weapon. So the first weapon you have in the game is the pistol, and I gotta say, it's the uh, we're just gonna get the worst one <laughs> out of the way first, because the 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 sidearm or the pistol is a little underwhelming. It's, it's actually very underwhelming for a Doom game. So um, here it is from the side, and, and you've got uh, you know a couple of different mods here and power ups. You get you know charging efficiency and quick recovery, and uh, move at full speed when you're energy charged, and you have maximum power with the sort of um, that's the mastery, the, the charge shot. None of these matter because you never use this weapon unless you're just trying to sort of wound one of the weaker demons so you could perform a specific glory kill in order to get an achievement. Uh, it's good for that, but it's, it kind of sucks for the actual game. Um, and furthermore, I think uh, the audio in general in Doom is fantastic, um, but this sounds like, you know, the underwater fish tank gun. It just kind of sucks. Uh, I want it to sound like the Desert Eagle in, in uh, Far Cry 2. You know, I want a powerful sounding Hand cannon, not this. So unfortunately, I think this is the suckiest gun. If you right click, there's kind of a cool animation. You can then, um, do the power up. I have uh, the HUD turned off here, so you'd see a little power up in the um, in the uh, reticule, but it's not showing that here. But it, again, it doesn't really matter. You're never going to use this. It's got a little bit of a cool animation now. See the thumb going back down after you shoot. Boom. Um, and it's got some nice detail on the gun. Uh, I'm going to keep bringing up the loving attention to detail, right? So loving attention to detail is something that I think is super important in the immersive experience of video games. And the very best video games have a loving attention to detail. And, and being, uh, being a 3D animator for the last 20 years, I know how tedious some of this stuff can get. And to have different um, animations for every single weapon, different, uh, you know, non-action animations or different um, firing animations or different uh, animations for glory kills. It gets very tedious, but they did such a great job in this game providing just a huge amount of animation 
uh, for all these weapons. Um, okay, so that's enough of the pistol because that's the suckiest one. Let's go to the next one, which is shotgun. Um, so the shotgun's got two different mods. We've got charged burst, which I love, which I'll show in a second if you haven't seen it yet. But it basically, you can shoot up to three bursts at once with the uh, once you get the mastery level, and the explosive shot, which is a fairly common mod for shotguns. It seems like there's a number of games. I want to think like Bioshock maybe has this. A couple of games have ha have the explosive shot shotgun mod. Um, if you get the mastery on that, you get sort of a cluster bomb effect, which is cool. Uh, let's, but let's take a look at the shotgun here. Oh, I just did the texture pop, so maybe it's maybe I'm wrong on that. But okay, so this is the charge burst. So right click, you see those three little lights pop up there, and I love that because when you're running around fighting demons and it's doom is extremely fast and it's very hectic. And these three lights give you an indication that you're ready to blast. You've got that uh, three shot there. Which really, a, a couple charge bursts in a row kill pretty much any demon in Doom. Um, in fact, you could one shot most of the lesser demons with just uh, the maximum level here. And those are actual lights. So when I talk about loving attention to detail, those aren't just luminous textures. Those are actual point lights somebody put on there to light up the, the metal on the gun there. And you can even use it as a sort of flashlight in a dark space. Those are actual lights on there, so I think it's really cool. Uh, when you hit R and swap, you're really swapping out the whole front of the gun. So let me just do it again. We're swapping and putting on the side piece for a charge burst. When we go to explosive shower, putting on a whole new uh, front end of the gun. And here again, I've got the uh, weapon graticle turned off, but it, I kind of like it on this one where it looks almost like a smiley face. And you right click to uh, aim it, and then you blast it and you get a, an explosion. So yeah, I don't use this one as much. I use Charge Burst all the time. This one, though, will one-shot a lot of things. Um, okay, that's Shotgun. Again, it, it's, I just think like they did such a nice job with the texturing here. This looks very beat up, very sort of industrial and military. If you look at the, the glare on the sort of lower right hand, you can see that PBR material where you've got um, a rougher material uh, to the left of that sort of jagged seam, those three little triangles in the lower right hand. There they've got the roughness turned up fairly high and a different specular texture on there. You can see the specular texture coming to view, the sort of dirty texture they have on that. With the different values and specularity. And the different values in the roughness, where you've got sort of shiny metal up top going to the sort of diffuse uh, rough metal on the side. And it gives that you know, when you're going underneath these, all these dynamic lights and with all the screen to space reflections, um, and you see all the lights play over the weapons like this, it just looks fantastic. And you mix in the scratch maps and dirt maps and roughness maps and specular maps with the PBR materials, and they just did a, a fantastic job with this. Um, might be cool to have an iron sight on this, a little more, a little more of an iron sight, usable iron sight. Maybe get a little closer on this one, but I think that's pretty cool. Okay, we have the plasma rifle, one of my favorite weapons. Um, plasma rifle. Let's take a look. Heat blast. This is the one I typically use. So uh, the idea is that the plasma builds up heat in the core, and you can right-click to vent it and blast your enemies or blast the demons with the uh, built-up heat. And once you get to uh, the mastery level, you've got uh, you don't even have to shoot to build up heat; it just builds up heat. Um, stun bomb I hardly ever used, but you actually it's actually really useful if you're trying to get achievements because there's certain achievements that you can only get in Doom by say doing a glory kill in a certain way. So what you could do is stun some demons and sneak up behind them and do a particular glory kill they can only do from behind and, and get those uh, achievements that way. So it's actually it's useful in that sense. Um, let's take a look at the animations here. This one's actually pretty cool. I'm gonna switch back to the uh, venting, the cool switch animation. Here you see the vent, sort of a uh, little bit of animation on that. You also see the, the little readout that's in red there, slowly going to blue. And this has a lot of side-to-side -side animation on it, which I like. Again, they did a great job with the texture maps. And this one, the plasma weapon is just relentless. When you play Doom, you never let go of left mouse click. You just run left mouse, left mouse. When you get close to somebody, you right mouse and blast like that. So, um, switch animation is pretty cool. You pop on the stun, and again, look at the little circular dial twisting and then popping out as it charges up. And then watch the little piece right above the thumb on the left-hand side as I do a, uh, a stun bolt. 
Boom. Cool animation there. Almost like a little shotgun bolt shoots out. Now you see it twisting, you see the readout going from red to blue again. Look at the readout after I shoot. Look at the little uh, dial underneath the readout as it um, gears back up to another charge. So I shoot, go, go red, the dial's spinning. Again, just loving attention to detail. They did such a nice, nice job with these. So I love Plasma Gun. Okay, after Plasma Gun, we've got uh, the Heavy Assault Rifle. And when I first saw Doom, before I actually bought it, I thought this weapon looked a little lame. Look just kind of a little too boxy and just uh, not very creative. But this is actually one of the best weapons in the game. And the reason it's one of the best weapons in the game is absolutely because of the uh, micro missiles here. So if we look at the heavy assault rifle. Uh, the tactical scope is one of the mods here. And honestly, uh, you can get some better weapons for it. And eventually you get uh, devastator rounds. If you like headshotting, then the tactical scope is nice to use. Uh, but it's in this is Doom, right? And in, in the campaign, very little time to like look through a scope and headshot stuff. You're mostly just running around and blasting. So it's you're not going to use it that much. Whereas the micro missiles, you're going to use relentlessly, especially when you get to the uh, bottommost missiles. You're just going to constantly fire these things. Um, taking a look at the micro missiles here, right click to activate them. What's cool is earlier in the game, before you're all modded up, when you when you right click, that thing just kind of comes up really slow, with ching, 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 which is neat. But but at this point, it just fires up really quickly. Love the sound effects. Love the little lights on the uh, back of the micro missiles. Love the little air hiss sound as you shoot these out. They stick into the enemies and blow up, and it's just a constant. Look at the, uh, look at the chain bolts going there. Constant, just micro missile, micro missile, micro missile, micro missile, and then boom, 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 and a micro missile, and then boom, 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 boom. Them both at the same time. It's just really, really cool. It's a really devastating weapon, and that's a lot of fun to use. So we'll be using this one a lot. The tactical scope, pop that on the top here, and you can zoom in. It's kind of got a, it's got a cool sight. Um, blast up. But you're just, you're not going to use it a lot. You know, you can headshot. If you like to headshot stuff, then go for it. If you like a challenge, you could try running around with this activated and headshotting on the run. Um, but it's, you know, headshotting is more, it's not, <laughs> sniper weapons aren't really doom, right? But, you know, I think maybe they could have come up with something else for this as an alternate weapon, but um, that's what we've got. So again, the uh, look at the light play across it. It's just a beautiful weapon. Let's get under here for some glare. Look at that lighting. It's just really well done. Got a micro missile. Maybe I'll slow down some of this stuff. Let's go back on there. Um, and this looks like a real weapon. This looks like a futuristic weapon. It's got that boxy sort of military industrial look. And uh, it just looks like something that would exist in the real world. Cool. I'd love to be able to do a 360 spin of these weapons, um, but we can't do that. I'd like to. I want to read all the little text and all the little decals that are on here. You can read some of these. IO logistics malfunction. It says <laughs> uh, some other stuff on here. Such a cool weapon, though. All right, moving up, we got RPG, RPG, classic uh, first-person shooter weapon. You always have to have an RPG. This is a couple of different mods. Um, both are actually really useful. Remote de detonation lets you basically launch the uh, RPG, and then you right-click to explode it. This is actually really good against the guys with the shields because you can launch a missile and it goes behind them, and you can detonate it and, and avoid the shield. Lock-on burst is pretty cool. Um, it's going to lock on to... One target and shoot three rounds at them, or up to three targets and shoot three different missiles at them. Um, so if I left click and right click to, to uh, detonate, oh whoops, I'm on lock on. One, one second, we hit R, do, we an, do the animation, we have a different side piece here. You'll notice on this um, switching animation here, it's using a rail on the side of the uh, weapon to put different sights on, and that's just exactly how a weapon would work. I mean, they really did a lot of uh, put a lot of effort into, into a lot of these weapons, making it you know, like a like a real weapon. I'm not crazy about the green color. Got to say, I guess it matches the uh, armor of our space guy, Doom guy, Space Marine, but looks a little bland. It may be a little more. It didn't look that mean, but uh, maybe that's just me. Okay, so left click, right click, left click, right click, detonate. Let's see 
the smoke effect. This has the additional uh, shrapnel and everything in the master mode. So this is very worth your time, well worth your time getting. Um, the lock-on, I use a lot, but unfortunately there's no demons in this room. It's the only room I could sort of use to show off all these weapons without getting attacked. Uh, but basically you hold right-click. You see the dimming of the uh, scope there? You see this guy dim when I right-click? So that's going to dim and the uh, the weapon sight is going to lock on to one, two, or three uh, different demons or just on one and you can blast away at it with it'll fire three rounds in succession but it, it won't lock on to anything here because uh, there's nothing here to lock on to but you can see the cool animation of the um you see the rounds you know the new round being chambered there you see the little uh, cylinder rotating again it's a fantastic job okay moving on to the gauze gun so gauze gun i have mixed feelings about the gauze gun Kind of looks like a Star Destroyer from the side or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, precision Bolt. I actually do use a lot. And I talked about not using the uh, sniper scope essentially on the on the, um, on the the assault rifle. But I do use it on this guy because you can one-shot, headshot just about any demon in the game. And two-shot, headshot the most powerful demons. It's a really powerful weapon. And Siege Mode, uh, once you get the Mastery Mode and you can run around and use it, it's, it's essentially turns it into... Kind of a mini BFG. Um, I'll show you how that works. You don't use it as much, but once you can, prior to getting the mastery mode, you can't move while using siege mode. So you're kind of a sitting duck while you charge this thing up and shoot. And it's not as useful, but once you get the mastery and you can move while using it, it's pretty cool. Um, so here we've got a couple. Again, the uh, change out animations are a little odd on this one. I'm not sure they really figured out how to do it. I think this weapon's too big. I think it. It's a little out of character. I just think they could have done better with it. I don't. I don't think it needed to be this big or elaborate. I think it could have been, you know, maybe a little more like the uh, gauze gun and the original Crisis. I thought was a good one. Um, but you can do the scope here, and you see those power readouts. Once those get to the top, you can blast the crap out of something. You can do it on the run too. So, it's, and you don't even have to get that accurate. It's just a really powerful weapon. Uh, when we do the switch out, it's sort of a weird switch out. I'm not sure what the piece is supposed to be that they're adding on the side there. There's a site, and then we're adding the siege mode piece, I guess. I, I'm not sure they really knew what to do with that. So feel for the animator there, but here you right click and sort of power it up. And then you, uh, uh, when you have the mastery, I can move slowly, but I can move and then blast away. It's got kind of a weak explosion at the end. Again, it's, it's a little BFG like. I think they could have come up with something else for this. Um, but, you know, all right. Got kind of a cool animation. I'm gonna slow that down. Take a look at it in slow motion. Uh, okay, so that was uh, Gauze Gun, and moving on up to Chain Gun. So let's take a look at Chain Gun, Doom. Classic. Chain Gun was in the original Doom uh, from the 90s. Which I played because my first game system was Pong on a black and white TV in my garage. So I win all gaming contests, or at least people my age. Um, I guess there's people my age who also played Pong on a black and white TV in their garage. Uh, but that's what I did when I was a kid, all you freaking console gamers. Um, okay, so mobile turret, and we've got uh, Gatling Rotor. So this is the only weapon in the game I haven't leveled up completely, and I'm, I probably am never going to do it because I just don't have the energy to get these other achievements. But you get a little bit uh, faster firing and, and a little better bullets, and then eventually some incendiary rounds, which would I thought would be cool to show you, but I, I'm just not going to do it because I have a life. Uh, mobile turret is freaking awesome. We'll get to that as well. Um, first, let's look at the, the uh, let me switch out of this, just regular chain gun. So normally with the chain gun, if I don't right click, there's a little bit of spin up time before it hits full firing, right? So there's a little bit of a spin up and with the demons flying around real fast, you're losing out on some, you're, 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 you're vulnerable while it spins up. So what you can do with this mod is, is you can right click and it'll spin up for you and then you can kind of wander around and when you see demons, you can immediately go in. Which is cool. I like I like that mode, but I love this mode. This is crazy. So again, it's slow, slow speed up, but let me let that wind down. If I right click, I get like <laughs> I get like three mini Gatling guns, and you could just blast the crap. Oh, I'm out of bullets. Blast the crap out of anything with that. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to uh, 
Ah, I can't get more bullets for that. Yeah, I'll play that over. So you right click and I have to play that over. So do a little replay there. We'll put it on loop so you can see it. That was my bad. But yeah, very cool. I really like that this uh, particular gun. It's got some um, kind of cool animation there. You can see like the uh, the belt that spins this, and you can. I'm not sure where Doom Guy keeps that. But, uh, that attachment you could probably keep in your backpack, but this attachment, I'm not sure where Doom Guy's keeping that attachment. All right. Uh, what else we got? We got chainsaw. Right click sort of readies it. Left click. Size your guy in half. So chainsaw is essentially an ammo. It's the coolest ammo pickup idea in any game ever made. You need ammo, you turn on the chainsaw, and you chainsaw a demon. And again, the loving attention to detail. The animators have different chainsaw animations for every single demon. They're super elaborate. They're just really well done. And uh, so kudos to those guys. I think they just did a fantastic job with this game. Um, that's chainsaw, and then of course BFG. Uh, BFG, the most famous weapon in Doom. Actually, I gotta say, a little weak in Doom. I think uh, the BFG and the Doom 3 was maybe a little, it just felt bigger. And I liked the sort of ammo explosion they had at the end, the little weak weak flip, but I liked the sound effects with it a little bit better. Um, this one, there isn't even a right click power up, as far as I can tell. Right click doesn't do anything. Uh, left click, click and hold doesn't do anything either. It just blasts out the BFG bolt and, and hits, you know, kind of takes out whatever is in your field of view. Um, kind of a cool animation. If you watch the middle of the screen, you'll see that cylinder open up as the bolt goes out. Boom. Which is cool. Add a bullet on that now. So yeah, BFG is eh. BFG is awesome, but I, I think I mean, it's the premier gun in Doom. I kind of feel like the BFG could have been a little more a little more F in the BFG, I think. Uh, but that's it. Those are all the Doom guns. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, we didn't do Super Shotgun. We do Super Shotgun real quick. Super Shotgun doesn't have much in the way of mods. You can get, essentially when you get Mastery, you can uh, shoot twice without reloading. And I guess if you have faster reload, which is crucial for this gun, and uh, shooting through targets. And, and there's a couple of uh, runes you can get that make it even more powerful, but... It's got a bit of an iron sight with a right click, and uh, got a good spread. Good spread. Good spread on that shotgun. Good spread. Nine ducks with super shotgun. A whole bunch of ducks. Uh, but yeah, super shotgun. I didn't actually use it a lot in the game. Uh, there's people who used nothing but the super shotgun. Uh, so it's a beloved gun. Um, and again, it's got a. It's a. It, they kept it simple on purpose, and I think they are true to the nature of the shotgun. I mean. Doom is about shotguns, and it's about demons, and, and that's we could distill it down to. And super shotgun is, is just an essential part. Of it. Um, but again, going through, we've got the pistol, we've got shotgun, we've got uh, plasma rifle, we've got heavy assault rifle, we've got uh, RPG, we've got super shotgun, we've got, whoops, it's out of ammo, but we've got the uh, gauz gun and out of ammo on the chain gun, and then, of course, we've got uh, uh, BFG and... That's it. I think I'm out of here. First person shotgun signing off on episode one. Push that button, Doom Guy. Laters. <laughs>